Alright then guys, we're back at the bench, um, ready to start the rebuild of the chuck. Um, so it's been completely stripped, cleaned, scotch brighted where it needed scotch brighting. I've stoned the surfaces that needed stoning, the sort of mating surfaces where there was any tiny bits of damage. So they've all been stoned flat and everything's now ready for, uh, ready for rebuild. So we're going to start with the main body. So it's a... Um, I don't know whether the camera's showing that, but it's a, a, a Fuerda, or however you pronounce it. I think these are sort of one of the better quality import chucks that you can get. Um, it was in a pretty, it wasn't in a bad state. I mean, it looked it looked fairly reasonably new when it was when it came with the machine, but um, it had obviously never been cleaned out for a long time. It was absolutely full of swarf and and it just didn't run you know i struggled to get the jaws out that took a bit of time so it's uh, hopefully now going to be in a much better condition when we when we rebuild it so we'll start with the um the main scroll so you've got the scroll on one side and the sort of ring gear on the other side so everything's been cleaned already as i said but i will give everything a last wipe over just before we uh, before we reassemble it wipe the inside of there just now so I know that's clean. So we're just going to put a drop of oil on here. And hopefully this will go back together. There is only one there's one or two teeth that have got a tiny bit of damage on them but it's not I've stoned the the sort of burrs away so it's um, I think it's okay. Perfect. And then I think we're gonna put some grease onto that now. I can get into it. This is probably where I would be better with some better quality um, yeah, some better quality lithium, well this is lithium grease but some, some of the better quality stuff but I don't have any so for now this will do. It's not a big job to strip this back down at some point in the future when I do get some uh, slightly better quality grease. I'm not going to go too mad. Thin coating, and then by the time that's been uh, rolled round, it will uh, it'll have covered all of the mating mating parts. So now we'll fit the Is I don't know what the proper name for these is. I'm sure they have got a proper name, but uh, I'm sure somebody will tell me what that is. All fits together nicely. So I now need to fit the um, the retaining 
screws with the with the shaft to hold those in place. So again, we'll just give those a light grease. I uh, I had to have a a really good clean up before I started this rebuild. My bench had got into a right mess. Um, with stripping the various bits of the lathe down, so uh, we've, had a, we've had a good tidy up. So we'll just screw those in now. So these are never tightened right the way up, these screws, they're just wound down until they uh, until the pin's fully engaged. That might be a bit too far on that one. So we'll now fit the uh, the back plate. Just give that face a wipe over again. What I'm going to do on here is just give this a very very thin coat of oil. I'm going to wipe the I'm going to wipe the excess off the mating surface. Now what I did do was on jaw number one. Let me just find that. There we go. So this is jaw number one. I've actually stamped a number one on the outside of the chuck and I've also stamped a number one on the outside of this before I stripped it so that I knew I was getting this back in the same orientation as it came apart. Start refitting the screws for that now.
and I should have done was given that a wipe over because there's more. More swarf falling off the Allen key than, uh, <coughs> than I took out of the chuck, I think. So I'm just taking these up till they just nip and then I'm just backing them backing them off so none of them are actually engaged. In fact, I'm going to start all of that again because what I meant to do is just put a drop of oil on each one. They're all backed off. I'm just going to check the fit, that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is just tiny knit, sort of equal and opposite, all the way around. Try and keep the pressure going in as evenly as I can. Just give them all a final tweak or cinch as it's called in the US. So the next job now is just to put the um, the cams back in. So again, they've all been uh, cleaned, degreased. And these have got a marker on. So there's a line on there which should show the right level of engagement. So the mark should be level with the yeah, it's that one. Level with the top face of the um, the chuck or the back plate, sorry. And then you just put the uh, the holding screw in place then to hold that in position. do want to be tight.
they should, if you've got it right, these should be loose. There should be a, a, an amount of play in these so that when they go into the spindle nose, if everything's not quite aligned, there's uh, there's some play in there to allow everything to align when you uh, when you tighten the uh, the cams up on the chuck on the sorry on the spindle nose. one. There we go. And then finally, there's three uh, cap heads to go in the front. Quite a nice, uh, nicely designed chuck in the fact that all of the uh, all of the cap heads are all the same, all the same size. So you need one Allen key to strip the entire, the entire chuck down. Okay. See what that feels like. completely different to how it felt before. So we'll just put a tiny drop of oil through the oiler. And then we're just going to put some onto the scroll. So let's have a look at our jaw numbers. Sure, they're marked up somewhere on here. There we go. So that's dual one, which is there. That's dual three, and this is dual two. So you start with the start with number one, and there's a million videos on this. So I'm not. To, in fact, I'm just going to put a tiny. I don't want a lot because when I first spin this chuck up it's going to be squirting oil all over the place so. so that's got the first one nipped and then you bring the scroll round so you just see it the number two jaw tiny bit of oil on that Take the scroll round to the number three position. Wow, well, that's completely different to uh, completely different to how it was when I stripped it. I wind them all the way in. They should meet in the middle if we've got everything correct, which they do. So that's it, that's the, 
that's the chuck rebuilt feels very nice now so I'm just going to give that a final wipe over and then I'm going to give it a light oil and then we'll fit that back to the spindle nose there we are back at the lathe guys again you'll see lots of people doing this but if you're ever taking a chuck off or putting a chuck on a little bit of wood across your bed just in case you drop it or you drop something it just protects your bed from any damage and hopefully stops your chuck disappearing into the back of the machine somewhere so I'm just going to, I've wiped this over already I'm just going to give it a tiny coat of oil won't do it any harm and the same thing on the back of the chuck I'm just going to give the Cam pins, a tiny coat. And then what there should be, or what there is, because I, I know when I took it apart is there's a mark on the spindle here on the top of the spindle there's a mark on there and that lines up with the badge plate on the front of the chuck so that you know you're always putting it back in the same orientation And there's two V's on the cam at the back and there's a mark on the on the bit that you tighten and the mark should always sit between the two V's now I don't think when I got the lathe this chuck key's kind of fitting into there but only just and this is obviously for the chuck it's not for that so it's doing the job but it's not ideal because they're not sitting fully home so that's another job for the mill. I need to make myself a, a proper key for uh, fitting and removing the chuck off the machine. So that's it. That looks good. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to probably run a couple of clock checks on the OD of the chuck just to see how that's running and then um, I'll probably look out a nice bit of bar, something that's got no rust on it and that I know is reasonably true and we'll put that in the chuck jaws and just see how it runs when it's nipped up because at the moment I've got no idea how good or bad that chuck is it looks pretty good from the strip down but uh, you know you don't really know until you've uh, tried it certainly the jaws themselves there's no wear, there's no sort of bell mouth into the jaws so um, they have been clattered into a couple of times on the front face, not not too badly, but um, but certainly the jaws themselves look pretty good. There's no uh, undue wear. So I've just put a, a solid carbide end mill in there because I know that that will be ground absolutely concentric. Um, there's a step diameter on here, but it will have been ground concentric to the shank, and I'm absolutely impressed. So I don't know if you can see the clock or not. It's not on. Uh, it's not on zero, but it doesn't matter for what I'm doing. But if you look at that, I'm measuring about a couple of tenths of a thou, if that, and then along its length. There's just no movement at all. So again, you know. Um, I don't think this has done a lot of work and and also that also shows that the spindle nose is running good as well. I did put a clock on that anyway so I knew that was good but uh, the interface with the chucks obviously good and the gripping of the of the jaws is also excellent. Um, 
you know that's a good three inches sticking out of the chuck there 75 millimeters and I'm measuring as I say I'm measuring a couple of tenths of a thou run out which um, for a second hand lathe and a, and a, and a, an import chuck I'm, uh, I'm impressed with that that's good so um, I'm pleased with that pleased with the way that's cleaned up and gone back together um, and uh, we'll carry on with the rest of the rest of the lathe clean up and um, We'll see where we get to. Um, next job really now then is just all cosmetic, more clean up of the rest of the sort of paintwork and the bottom tray which I'll do off camera. I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me wiping and cleaning paintwork down. It's not the most exciting of things. And that will probably be the initial, and I mean the initial strip down of the lathe. So I'm fairly happy with the compound slide, the cross slide. There's a bit of work to do on the tail stock. Um, the rubber wipers on the tail stock uh, disintegrated when I took them apart. Um, I'll just show you that. So apologies for the handheld. I'll just spin you around. So right on the front of the tail stock body, there should be two wipers on there, one one on each side. So they just crumbled and fell fell apart. The rubber was uh, quite brittle. Um, so what I have done is I've ordered some, I measured the thickness of the, of the rubber and it was about four and a half, five millimetres thick, best I could measure it. So what I've done is I've ordered some four and a half mil, or is it five mil thick rubber sheet. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on the bottom shelf on the lathe, on the top shelf on the top of the headstock where there was carpet originally, where the chuck keys and everything else lived, so I'll put um, a sheet of it on there, a sheet on the bottom shelf for the other tooling, and then what's left over, I'm going to attempt to make some uh, some new rubber wipers for the uh, for the tail stop, and uh, I'll film that as I do it. Um, so that's, as I say, that's kind of the initial strip down. I, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing, everything looks to be in good condition. Oh, the cross slide by the way, um, I mentioned earlier in this video that there was some notchiness in the cross slide um, and I think I said that when I removed this screw at the very front of the handle here, um, sorry you still can't see that on this the camera, so there's a screw right in the end here and when I removed that screw the notchiness disappeared and the notchiness all seemed to be in, in this unit, it didn't seem to be coming from deep down where the thread is. Um, on further inspection, when I cleaned everything up, this the screw that goes through here has got a slot machined into it, and it's been filled with a, like a blue rubber locking solution. The whole idea of that being that, that you tighten the screw up to the right torque, and the rubber locking solution stops the screw from coming back undone again. It's it's a bit like a semi-permanent Loctite idea, like a lock nut almost, like a nylon nut. Um, and it's fairly obvious that what had happened was whoever had last put that screw in had just tightened it up as tight as they possibly could, which is not how it's designed to be used. So as soon as I'd done the rebuild, all the notchiness has gone away now. So it's just all very nice and very nice and smooth. There's just no notchiness in there at all. So it was, it, all it was was the just the setting of that screw in the end of the handle. So that's all. That's good news. So all in all, the only thing that's a bit of a, a, an Achilles heel, as I've already described, is the uh, is the tool post that I need to do something with. Well, not the tool post itself, but the cartridges. One thing I am going to make for the tool post, this arrangement on the top here has just been cobbled together. It's obviously not original stuff. Um, so I'm going to make a new clamp down piece for the, for the centre so that I'm not always having to try and find a spanner when I need one. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to address the the um, the cartridges on the on the milling machine, so that'll be a, a a good meaty project to get into for the mill. So um, yeah, I think that's um, that's just about it. We're uh, we're almost ready to to put this into action and see what it does. Um, I do have some more jobs to do before I start running in anger. Um, I've ordered some oil. And what I'm going to do next is take the, um, we're going to whip this head cover off again 
and I'm going to take all the oil out that's inside the headstock completely. It looks okay, um, smells okay, but I'm going to clean that whole top end of the headstock out completely. Um, and then I've ordered some fresh oil to put back in, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that. And I've also ordered some oil for both gearboxes at the bottom. Well, the, sorry, one's a gearbox. So we'll, we'll drain this gearbox and replenish the oil that's in there. And then also on the saddle itself, there's another um, gearbox, I think. I need to do some reading on that. I don't actually know whether the oil that sits in here is anything to do with the gearbox or whether it's just for the, the oiler. So on here there's a plunger and if you pull that it, it just squirts oil all up into your slideways um, onto the saddle and into the cross slide um, and there's oilways machined into into both into the cross slide slides for the oil to sit. What I don't know is if this this sump down here is purely to provide this uh, this oiler or whether it's actually also acting as gearbox oil for the shafting and gears that run in here so I need to do a bit of read up on that but whatever the case the oil that I've purchased is the right oil for that particular gearbox because I've got the, the manual downloaded so I've got the right oil so there's a bit of oil work to do um, on all of those three bits and then uh, a bit more cosmetic work and we're, we're almost uh, we're almost in business at that point um, minus the uh, the tool post cartridges that I need to do something with so uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the lathe and uh, I'll, I'll try and edit this episode together um, into something that makes some sense and um, we'll bring you back on the next episode whatever that may be maybe more on the lathe or it may be getting into the tool post cartridges on the mill so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing share please with anybody else who you think might be interested in what I'm doing and um, we'll see you on the next episode.